ברוך אתה ה' אלוהינו מלך העולם שהכל נהיה בדבר. Have you visited Israel lately? Many people think that Jerusalem is an old city, very important from a spiritual point of view. On the other hand, Tel Aviv is very modern with all sorts of conveniences, with beach. But yet, if you go to Jerusalem, you will see that it has also become a center for high tech. There are new buildings being built in Jerusalem also. There is what is called the Rakevet Kala. That is a train, short train, electric train, that runs through the cities of Jerusalem. Very convenient to take it. Jerusalem is a modern city also. It is a combination of both, old and new. Then comes a date, which is the ninth day of Av in the Jewish calendar, usually around July, August, in which we remember the destruction of the Temple of Jerusalem, of both temples, occurred on the same day, the ninth day of the Jewish month of Av. And it's a day of fasting, it's a day of mourning. So the question is, you go to Jerusalem, you see it rebuilt, so what are you mourning for? My revered teacher, the late Rabbi Joseph B. Soloveitchik, on one occasion said the following, during the existence of the second Beit HaMikdash, the second temple in Jerusalem, the day commemorate the 9th of Av, the date of the destruction of the first temple? Well, it couldn't be a day of sadness. What do you commemorate? The destruction? Well, here it is. It has been rebuilt. So he said, no, you still commemorated the destruction. So what did you ask God for on that day? Well, you asked God, not to destroy the second temple. Just like the first temple was destroyed, apparently there's a possibility of destruction. Now we are asking that the second temple not be destroyed. I go back. How can we observe Tisha B'Av nowadays when Jerusalem is a revitalized city? And the ninth of Av not only reminds us reminds us not only of the destruction of Batei Mikdash, of the two Beit Amikdash, it also reminds us of the day when the spies that were sent to Israel to see if it's apt, if it's a good place to go to, to conquer, if it would be easy to do it, came back with an evil report. It is beautiful and so on, but we can't do it because the people are giants. The cities are fortified. So it reminds us of that evil report because of that evil report. We stayed 40 years in the desert. As a matter of fact, our rabbis say that the Shabbat in a sense is representative of many tragedies that occurred in the history of the Jewish people. Because if we would commemorate every tragedy, we would practically be fasting the entire year. Some people even say the Shoah. There is a date in which we commemorate the Shoah, but many others said, you know, Tisha B'Av can also incorporate the Shoah in it. Tragedies are incorporated within, within, the Shoah, within Tisha B'Av. So maybe we are commemorating Tisha B'Av today, not because we see Jerusalem, beautiful Jerusalem, how can you cry today about a destroyed city? What Tisha B'Av reminds you is there is an alternative. You have a great city today, but you have to watch it. You have to care for it. You have to be very careful because destruction is always a possibility as well. I think many a time we take our good fortune for granted. You know, people become accustomed to living in freedom and to be able to go out in the street and work wherever you want. But there are alternatives in this world, unfortunately. There are societies in which you cannot go out freely into the street. You cannot express yourself freely. You can't do freely whatever you want. As a matter, you are controlled at all times. So maybe Tisha B'Av has to be commemorated even today, when Jerusalem has been rebuilt, even though the Beit HaMikdash has not been rebuilt, well, that is something that God will have to do because of several reasons for it. We cannot, we humans cannot do it. But there is always the possibility of destruction, of desolation. The progress that you see today is here today, but it may not be tomorrow unless you are careful, unless you are cautious 
unless you take certain measures to make sure that destruction does not appear again. But I think it's also in our personal lives as well. We're doing well, we have our homes, we have all our comforts, and we enjoy them. And we think that this is the way things have to be. But then a pandemic comes, then an earthquake comes. There are certain events that are out of our control. So be grateful for the things that you have. And remember, there is always an alternative that can make you lose many of the privileges that you have. So be thankful to God for the life that he gives you, for your family, for the house in which you live. Thank you.